guys, I'm Travis. If you're watching this, you may have recently picked up a bulldozer loop canopy. And today we're going to go over how to install one, uh, cut one out, get your camera fitted, some of the nuances of this so that you're successful with uh, your first cut. Okay, first let's go over the tools you're going to need to get this done. Scissors, hobby knife, good little screwdriver, your canopy, your soon-to-be whoop, a push pin, your camera, you're going to need some extra screws that fit those mounting posts on the sides. So we're going to use those to secure the canopy. Alright, so this one's already taken apart. To start with, you may want to mount your VTX board underneath. Uh, if you're doing a mullet modded camera, you've probably got, you've got ample space under this canopy on top. If you've got a separate VTX uh, or the wire length to do it, this area underneath fits a lot of different separate VTX units. Uh, the Bull Clash FO2, uh, the King Kong Q25, um, those are the only ones I've tried. Uh, there's probably others that fit under there as well. So. To get that under there, just desolder two of your wires, flip the board to one side, you've got plenty of room to work. On the bottom, for example, this is an EO10. If you're working with that, on the bottom, you'll see there are V minus and V plus labeled here. And those two power points are a great place to grab power if you're mounting underneath. One other thing to go over on an EO10, for example, is this canopy is designed to keep everything as low as possible so you can get through the tightest space as possible. So you're going to want to take a sharp knife and just do a little incision cut through that rubbery adhesive and bend your crystal forward. All of the Acro enabled flight boards that are running beta flight, uh, it's going to fit just fine. Uh, just the EO10 that's got this crystal here. I'm not sure about the fur beam. I don't own one of those. But if it does, bend it forward. There is an elevated area right here in the canopy that that crystal fits nicely under. So, um, I don't have a spare VTX to go ahead and do an example on that install right now. Let's just imagine that we've got it under there. It's wired up and it's ready to go. We're going to go ahead and put our screws back in the flight board and get that secured in. So at this point what you have is your craft with your camera hanging off to the side and some wires coming out of it. So get on to the canopy and the work that we're going to have to do here. First take your camera and unscrew the lens out of it. So you get the lens out of the camera body. Be careful not to touch your inside of your lens. You get fingerprints. What we're going to do next is we're going to take our hobby knife. We're going to come right in here. And we're going to cut this little protrusion out of the plastic. It's going to leave a little bit of a sleeve, and that sleeve is going to become the mount for the camera. So uh, about a millimeter up, maybe a half a millimeter up, and then just go ahead and apply light pressure, and the knife's going to go right through it. It's going to make a nice opening through here that we can stuff the camera lens neck in. You can see there, basically just taking a slice straight down out of that thing. 
and the neck of the lens is going to go right in. So in this step, we want that to be a tight fit. The tighter the fit is, the better it's going to hold your camera. So as you're shoving this in here, don't be afraid to just muscle it right on in. And then bend your canopy back into shape. If it deforms, if you can see that you need to open up your cut a little bit, go ahead and get it done. And when you're done, your lens is going to be in like that. There's going to be a little bit of plastic, a little bit of a plastic neck. If you're running one of the thicker colored canopies, you can eliminate a little bit of that neck thickness. So this area right here won't have, you could cut more of this out and it'll make it a little easier to get it in with a thicker canopy. And the ultralight white ones, I like to leave about that much. It makes a good sturdy camera mount. You don't ever see vibrations and um, you save the weight of a 3D printed bracket for the camera. All right, now that we've test fit the lens, we know that's going to work out fine. Let's go ahead and get it cut out. So get a good scissors. I recommend some of those nice uh, surgical style curved scissors are great, but if this is all you got, this is going to work just fine. And what I'll show you here is that there's a cut line that's molded into this canopy right through here, right across the front. It goes all the way around and you'll see it from the inside if you get the light just right. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera lens, uh, the camera here or not right now. There's a cut line that goes all the way around. So the technique, the easiest way to get a good cut is First start by taking off excess material. And then pick one of the sides. And let's go ahead and get that pretty close to that cut line. Now that we've got it, we're going to take the canopy at 90 degrees. And you're looking straight down at that cut line and come in here with your scissors. Because the goal of this is just to have, a, have it essentially lay pretty close to flat. So if you start like this, the easiest way to deal with this curve is you're coming right in on top of this cut line from this angle at 90 degrees. Same thing right here, I'm laying this part of the blade right up against the back of the canopy. That helps keep it lined up. And one nice swoop. Comes right through. Down to the front, right at 90 degrees. Last one, right at 90. So now, after making that cut with that 90 degree fashion, what you'll see is that you're real close here and here to the cut line, but you've left some material along this middle section. You can come back in and trim that up pretty easily. You can flex the camera, the canopy around uh, to help get the right angle but in this case what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at it from the top get under your light good I'm just going to make it look good from the top that's not looking 
not at all. I don't mind this extra material right here, because what this extra material is going to do, especially on an EO10, on a B core, on a B brain, on the furry B flight controller, you've got a little gap right here between the duct and the flight board. The only one you don't have a gap between the duct and the flight board is the maker fire board. And on that one, you're going to want to get a nice good cut on the cut line. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use that extra material just to tuck right under the duct. So to start off, we're fitting it, I like to start at the back. I tuck the back of the canopy right up against that brace and start positioning it so that we're nice and in line with the back, tucked under the lip of the back ducts. Hold pressure on top. And use a fingernail and fit the front ducts under the lip. And it just about stays on its own without keeping the pressure on top. Now that that's in place, grab your safety pen and looking at the sides, poke a hole on this side. poke a hole on that side. Now it can go ahead and pop out. Pre-selected two little screws that thread in nicely. Get those screws loaded up. So this is the point now where you'd want to go ahead and get your camera fitted in. Canopy's cut out, it's fitting on there nice. See here the camera's in place. It's looking good from the front. Okay, now that we've got our canopy fitment all ready, uh, got our wires connected. Now this is an example of one with the VTX already installed. So we've got wires connected. You can see the dipole ready to tuck under. We're going to grab a battery. We're going to use a test pattern like this on the wall. You can Google uh, camera focus test pattern. And what this is going to do is we're going to twist the lens in and out of the camera body. And we're going to bring this pattern into as much focus as possible. So this is going to help make sure you've got good clear view after unscrewing your lens. So go ahead and grab a battery, plug it in, and adjust that lens. Make sure you get the pattern in focus. You're going to want to be about 10 to 15 feet back or as, as far back as, as you think you're going to be able to see contrast in a pattern once you print it out. Um, one other thing to make sure you get straight at this point is the angle of the camera itself inside the canopy. You don't want to be looking at crooked ducks. So once that's all done, we head back to the bench. We put in two screws and you're ready to go. We come back and do the same thing again. Start in the back, tuck it right up against the back brace, work the extra material we left beyond the cut line under the ducts. I'm 
we should be able to come in here where we piloted the holes. And just screw it right on. In case you're still overlapping, take a fingernail, run it right around the edges, and you're all done. Here's a close-up view of the way it's fitting. Nice solid installation. Camera's not going anywhere. You can, if you like, go ahead and use the third mounting point here. Uh, I haven't found it necessary, but it's there if you want to use it. And from there, happy whooping. Just want to close by saying thanks again, guys. I appreciate your support if you picked up one of these things. Um, I really enjoyed it a lot more now that I don't have to check my VTX antenna. Uh, I keep resoldering that thing, uh, dealing with bent wires, uh, whether it's a dive hole or a clover leaf. You know, you land on that thing and it just they just get tore up. Um, this is awesome. These things are virtually indestructible. This is a Rubbermaid type material, high density polyethylene. Um, I know uh, polystyrene is popular with the mullet mod. Uh, I'm not sure why that stuff just it cracks and tears and splits easily. Uh, you can't kill this thing. You're you're not gonna you're not gonna hurt these canopies, even the super light lightweight ones. So enjoy. If you guys have any questions. Uh, Shoot me a comment, come through the email. I'm happy to answer any questions, provide you as much support as possible, and happy flying. Thank you.